evening, FIDF. I'm a Natadmoni, an Israeli-born chef and a former IDF soldier in the Israeli Air Force. You might know me from Balabusta Restaurant or Taim Falafel in New York City. I am grateful to light these candles in honor of the brave young men and women who keep a beautiful country safe. So I want to wish you and your loved one a Chag Sameach and Api Chanukah. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'Mitzvotav Metzi Ivanu Ladli Hikner Shel Chanukah Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam שעשה ניסים לאבותינו בימים ההם בזמן הזה. האמן. חג שמח. We're at Tzomet Gitai, Gitai Junction in southern Israel. As you may be able to tell, it's a very busy junction. Cars coming and going with both Israeli license plates and Palestinian license plates. Around us is a mix of Jewish villages and Palestinian villages. And so the soldiers who are on guard at this junction really have one job, to keep the peace, to make sure that everything goes as routinely as possible, that there is no, as we say in slang, balagan, no chaos. Well, earlier this year, at this very junction, Gitai, a soldier from the IDF engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat with a terrorist. The terrorist was wielding a knife and attempting to kill this soldier. This soldier happens to be a lone soldier. She is from London, and she serves in the Pikud HaOref, the Home Front Command. She, along with her commander, was able to neutralize the threat and perhaps save a larger terrorist attack from happening. Today on FIDF Live, we are going to meet this soldier and learn more about their job here in central Israel. Sergeant Leon, thank you so much for joining us on FIDF Live. I want to jump right in. Can you tell us what was your mission that day? That day, our mission was to ensure there was no friction between the Palestinians that pass in that junction as well as uh, the Israelis there. We want to make sure that everyone goes home in peace and there's no, uh, no troubles. Uh, so that's our mission uh, in the day-to-day -day there in the junction. Tell me now what happened next that morning. That morning was a regular morning, regular routine. I was there from 8 in the morning. Uh, we did the usual routine until around 11. We saw a car that had uh, a Palestinian license plate stopped on the side. Thought it was a bit suspicious, so we went over there to check it out. Um, we checked it out, we cleared the car, the, cl the car had gone away. Um, and on our way back, to our guarding post, I'd noticed someone walking behind me. Uh, I'd taken my distance from him since I felt he was walking a bit close to me. I didn't feel he was suspicious, no hands in the pocket, no, no other suspicious signs at the time. Uh, but I said I'll, I'll keep an eye on him. I kept checking back uh, as I was crossing the road to make sure he was keeping his distance. Just as I turned around, uh, he'd already leaped at me with a knife in his hand, uh, attempted to stab me multiple times. I'd responded with um, what we learn in Karmagad's first response is to guard with your hand and that's exactly what I did in that moment. And then I used my gun to um, push him off me. Uh, we fought a little bit between us. He again was continuing to try and stab me. Uh, he'd managed to push me over and he'd run to my commander to try and stab him as well. Uh, they'd also fought a little bit and my commander managed to release a bullet. Um, and straight after the billet, he'd come running back to me from the adrenaline in his body. Um, he had a, a mission and he was gonna complete that mission. So he came back to me to try and stab me again. And uh, I'd gave him one more whack with my gun and he'd fallen to the ground and he uh, passed away in that moment. So the threat is neutralized. What happens next in the aftermath of the attack? Straight away, they pulled me into the ambulance to check me out. Uh, the knife scraped my finger, nothing big. Thank goodness. Um, so they checked me out, cleared me. And in that moment, everyone came run running to me, telling me, you need to call your parents. It's going to be in the news. Call your parents before they worry. I said, you know what? I'll call my parents. I'll calm them down a little bit. Um, and I rang them up just to tell them, mom, dad, everything's OK. Uh, nothing serious. I was involved in a situation. Uh, you don't have to worry. Ignore the news articles. I'll talk to you later when everything's calmed down. 
you and your commander received a certificate of appreciation from the Ephraim Regional Brigade. How did that make you feel? At the end of the day, I felt like I'd accomplished my mission as a, as a lone soldier and moving to Israel. That was, that was the goal, to protect the citizens, to protect Israel so that others can live in peace and in happiness. And at this ceremony where you received a certificate, your parents surprised you in the Zoom call. What was that like? I was, as you could tell, very surprised and really happy to see them. Uh, definitely made my day. I wasn't expecting it. Um, even a small moment like a Zoom call. Um, it's really nice to see your parents' face and, and how proud they were of me. And I really appreciated that surprise. It, made, uh, it made, definitely made my day. You grew up in Britain and became a lone soldier. What inspired you to come join the IDF? I'd always felt that I wanted to join the IDF. Uh, I remember specifically in my teen years, uh, relaxing on the beach on my holidays, uh, taking a look back at the promenade in Tel Aviv and seeing soldiers sweating in the August heat with a big bag on their back on their way home from base. And I just thought to myself, it's unfair that I'm sitting here relaxing and enjoying the beach and they're over there working to keep us safe. Sergeant Leon, on behalf of everyone at FIDF Live, thank you so much for spending some time with us. And on behalf of all of Israel, thank you for what you do. You exemplify what it means to be at the ready all the time on behalf of the country. Thank you very much.